On Larry King Now, I sit down with the world's most famous harpist, Joanna Newsom. The chorus in that song has is sort of an experiment in distribution of syllabic weight and sort of <laughs> contrary rhyme schemes. You know, there's the dominant rhyme scheme, but then there's a different one threaded through that sort of voices a, a opposing polymeter musically. Are you abstract? Not on purpose. <laughs> Your music is not on Spotify, why not? Spotify as a business model is not good. It's based on the idea of circumventing the payment of artists. I think I'm a lot less serious than people assume. People would think you're very, very, very serious based yeah. on the lyrics you write. Yeah. You're deep and serious. Yeah, I think, I think when I work on music, I'm occupying a part of my brain that I don't spend much time in when I'm not working on music. Don't you like rap and hip hop and Dolly Park? Yeah. <laughs> Plus, something I've never done before, Joanna teaches me to play the harp. All next on Larry King Now. King now, our special guest is Joanna Newsom, a story to tell. At the end of 2014, I did an interview with Vice Music website called Noisy, in which I claimed that there was no famous harpist in the world. I was wrong. Across from me today is a multi-talented musician, lyricist, and likely the world's most famous living harpist, Joanna Newsom. Joanna's fourth studio album, Divers, was released October 23rd to rave reviews from the New York Times, Rolling Stone, and Pitchfork, among others. And later, we're gonna try something I've never done before. Joanna is gonna teach me to play the harp. Why did you pick <laughs> the harp? Uh, I don't totally remember. I was really young when I started. I was. I think five. Why did your parents give you a harp? Well, they resisted giving me a harp. I, I think I saw the woman who ended up being my teacher named Lisa Strazzi Stein performing somewhere in our town and um, just fell in love with the instrument and started harassing my parents about it. And they took me into Lisa to see if she would teach me. And she said I was too young and said I needed to take piano lessons until I was eight. And so I started taking piano lessons, didn't like it very much, and m my mom would just periodically bring me back to Lisa and try to persuade her to teach me. And finally, um, she did. accepted. I, I think I was five or six. You just released your fourth studio album, your first in five years. Why the long break? It took me a long time. <laughs> uh, writing, working with a bunch of different arrangers. You write lyrics, you do a lot of things other than harp. I do, yes. Theta Magazine said this about your work. Newsom's albums move through time like doctoral novels, spinning grand inspirations from literature and history into music that feels personal, even where there's an uncertainty about what she's actually singing about. Written plainly on a piece of paper, her words read like a kind of Middle English that only she can translate. Are you abstract? Not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... I, would, I wouldn't call it abstract, I would just say maybe impressionistic, not always necessarily literal. On you the said nose. you can't write an easy song. It's a weird thing I said. I don't know why I said that. I think what I meant was um, my, what comes naturally to me would not necessarily be described as easy. Did the harp come before the writing? Uh, no, they came at the same time because from my first lesson, my teacher, Lisa, incorporated composition and improvisation. So even as a five-year-old, I was writing and I wrote music my whole childhood. But I didn't sing, I didn't write lyrics, it was just instrumental harp music. Can a harp play any kind of song? Can a harp play a Sinatra album? Yep. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's a huge range of color and style that the harp is capable of outside of the sort of classical tradition. You've said of your fans, there's a group of people who are showing up with absolute complete faith that there's something worth digging in for the lyrics. And if I don't put it in there, it's like breaking a contract. 
So they come expecting things, right? They come expecting things. Sometimes it's very simple, but at least uh, I feel like I can't throw anything away. I, I I'll read you something you wrote that is not simple, called Leaving the City. And I could barely breathe for seeing all that splintered light that leaked, her fissures fleeing, launched in flight, unstaunched daylight, brightly bleeding, Bleach the night with dawn deleting in that high sun after our good run. What does that mean? Because <laughs> I'm a lonely Jew here on the forest. Uh, well, I don't like to ever say what the songs mean, you know. I, I feel like... Well, it looks like someone's leaving. Right, someone is leaving a city. I got um, that. Yeah, that, that, the chorus in that song has, it was sort of an experiment in distribution of syllabic weight and sort of <laughs> contrary rhyme schemes. You know, there's the dominant rhyme scheme, but then there's a different one threaded through that sort of voices a, a opposing polymeter musically. Do you write the music and then the lyric or the lyric and then the... Usually the, like a very simple version of the music, just melody and chords and then everything sort of expands from that. Are you writing all the time? No, not now. I was for maybe three years of the process of making the record. I'm not really writing right now. Your music has been described as a lot of different things. Blues, Baroque, pop, ragtime, waltz, popular song, French Impressionism. How would you describe it? I think all of those and maybe also a little bit of West African Cora influence and some British Isles influence. Little Where were you born and raised? Grass Valley, well. Born in Grass Valley, raised in Nevada City, California. They're just next to Where is Grass Valley? Uh, it's in the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas. It's sort of triangulated between Sacramento and Lake Tahoe. The album is called Divers. What's the meaning of that title? Um, it's sort of describing the uh, narrators or lead protagonist or subject of all of the songs. Uh, there's some character in each song that is engaged in some version of diving, falling, or, um, you know, diving a plane, diving through water, falling through space. You do very successful concerts, do you not? Uh, sure. I hope so. Well, you do. I mean, you're... People the, come. You're the best-known harpist in the world. Is the harp difficult? Mm. I think the harp is interesting because I think there is no limit to the extent to which you can improve um, abilities, but it's almost immediately, you'll see later, but it's, okay. it sounds great kind of the first moment you pluck a string, even if you've never played the harp before. So it's very easy to create pleasing sounds on the harp, and it's as hard as you want to make it to become good at it. Our guest is the great musician Joanna Newsom. Up next, we'll talk about her work with Paul Thomas Anderson, her thoughts on the world of music streaming services. Stay with us. Our special guest is Joanna Newsom. Her new album is Divers. Your music is not on Spotify. Why not? Um, well, I think Spotify as a business model is not good. It, um, it's based on the idea of circumventing the payment of artists. How to beat the artists out of money. Yeah, I'm not I'm not opposed to streaming. I understand that the the um, world is shifting and the way that music is valued and monetized is shifting and, and um, I'm okay with that and I'm even okay with you know people not paying for music uh, or paying for let's say someone wants to buy physical media someone wants to buy a record but they would also like the option to stream my album at work or something, I'm fine with that. I just wish there was a better way to do it that, that didn't, uh, you know, only well, you pay call, a company. You called it a, vil a villainous cabal I of did. major labels? I did. A cynical and musician-hating system. I did, I did call it those things. You um, got an alternative? No, I mean, maybe. Uh, maybe there is an alternative out there. I don't know. I haven't heard of one that, that okay. seems built the way that I would prefer it to be built. Spotify's global head of communications and public policy replied. Here's an excerpt from what they said. 
We'd love to sit down with Joanna and try and clear up some of the misunderstandings about how Spotify works to support artists, songwriters, and the whole music industry. For example, someone has led her to believe we don't pay artists anything for advertising and subscriptions. In fact, we pay around 70% of all of our revenue from every single advertising and subscription dollar in royalties. Yeah. They, I mean, they pay royalties and then the royalties are divvied up according to the particular licensing agreement between each artist and each artist's labels. Um, the tricky thing is that most major labels are involved, you know, have a financial stake in Spotify, so they're not really making, unlike... So the artist gets screwed? I mean, the artist gets sort of screwed. Uh, they're, they're making a royalty, but the... Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to um, justify cost and um, needing it's to recoup. It's complicated. They have a, someone once said, no movie has ever made money. <laughs> <laughs> right, and there's definitely, there's a way, for example, many major labels are guilty of a scenario in which a record can be wildly popular but never seem to recoup. You know, there's always new things that gets Got charged it. against the album. Paul Thomas Anderson directed two of your music videos for Divers. He's a tough guy. He's a huge director. And he cast you as the narrator in last year's Inherent Vice. He said because the narrator knows more than the characters. He said of you, that's actually Joanna to me as a person. I don't think she flaunts it, and it's not obnoxious, but I always think she knows a little more than the rest of us. What do you make of that? It's very nice. Um, that's nice. I don't know. I don't think that's true, but... Uh, he also said there's a part of her that has one foot in another universe. What do you make of that? That is accurate. <laughs> for better or for worse. Did you like doing Inherent Vice? I loved it. Paul's the best director in the world, and he's an amazing person, and it was one of the most fun things I've ever done. How did you get famous? In other words, was there a record? Was there an appearance? How did the public get to know Joanna Newsom? I would argue that maybe, in general, the public doesn't necessarily know me. It's still pretty, you know, I have people who really... Is pay... it cult following? Sure, yeah. People pay, pay attention. The people who do care maybe care a lot, but... How did the cult find you? Slowly, you know. <laughs> I've, made, I've been making records for a long time and performing for maybe 11 years now, 12 years now. Um, so just slowly touring, putting out records. I don't think there that wasn't was... one event, one appearance, one record. It's been a climb. I think so, yeah. I mean, I started doing late night TV appearances pretty early on, but it wasn't like there was a overnight sensation thing. I, I think uh, my music took a while maybe to find its audience. Because the harp is not a wildly popular instrument, right? People don't flock. Right, and I think many of the people among whom harp is popular are going to harp music for maybe different reasons than the reasons they might come to my music. It's not necessarily soothing or relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, You're not that kind of harpist. Not necessarily. You're not I mean, in the lounge. Uh, not no. I might not be dinner accompaniment mm. necessarily. <laughs> Up next, we'll talk about Joanna's family and her husband Andy Sandberg, and we'll play a game of if you only knew. And later, Joanna's going to give me a harp tutorial, which will last about a minute and a half, and I'll be gone. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> We're back with Joanna Newsom. The new album is Divers. You come from a family of scientists. Both of your parents are doctors. Your sister is an astrophysicist. She's actually a, now a geophysicist. What's she, the difference? Well, she she got she studied astrophysics as an undergrad, and now she's getting her PhD in climate science. That's so. harder than astro. I don't know enough to comment on that, but I think uh, she feels more um, inspired by that. Well, you must have scientific genes. Did you ever think of going that route? No, I'm the only person in my family who has no aptitude for math or science at all. What did they think of your aptitude for music? Well, they're all... Music was very important in my house growing up as well. It's always being played, and my mom is a pianist, and 
um, my sister's a cellist, my brother's a drummer and a pianist, and well, you know, science is not your interest. It's uh, no, I mean, I, I I can't really wrap my head around <laughs> science. Neither can I. <laughs> All right, uh, harp seems a rather serious instrument. Life mm -hmm. seems serious with your parents and family background. You're married to Andy Samberg, um, who does not seem the most serious person in the world. He's not. I believe, the most serious person in the world. <laughs> you suggested that your marriage has made you think more about death because, as you said, there's someone you can't bear to lose. Tell me about your feelings about Andy. <laughs> what is special about... Oh, he's, he's my favorite person in the world. Yeah, he's the most... Uh, he's the person I would most want to hang out with at any given moment. But, you know... Does he like the harp? He loves the harp. He's probably the uh, biggest super fan of uh, my music. Does he understand your vocals and your songs? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Do you want children? Sure. Okay. Little little harpist? Little, little harpist. Little Sandberg? Yeah, little <laughs> harpist Sandberg. Thank you for putting that image in my head. <laughs> right, we're going to play a little game of If You Only Knew. I just throw some All questions right. at you, okay? What's an instrument you wish you could play? Guitar. Guilty pleasure. Um, looking at antiques on the internet. I looked at it the other day. It's fun. It is when fun. they appraise them too. Oh. You ever see that where they? No. Yeah. Uh, musician fans would be surprised to know you listen to. Haha. <laughs> um. I don't know if they, if I listen to anything surprising. I'm kind of depressingly predictable. Um. I mean, I like a lot of rap, hip hop. You do. I do. Favorite comedian other than your husband? <laughs> oh, probably... I mean, probably Steve Martin. He's hysterical. Yeah. Something you wish you were better at? Being organized. If you could trade places with someone for a day, who would it be? Dolly Parton. Really? Yeah. You like country music, too? I do. And, I, and her worldview is, I think... <laughs> Probably the most divine, um, like, Dalai Lama-esque worldview. <laughs> Do you imagine. have a favorite lyric of your own? Ha. Huh. Uh, yeah, I probably. I don't know. It's too embarrassing to, to think about. <laughs> okay. Do you have a favorite lyric of someone else's? Mm. Yeah. Uh, Mickey Newbery, I think, is my favorite lyricist. Do you know Mickey Newbery? No, give me a song. Um, Angeline is a great song. Oh, I know that song. Yeah. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Mm, probably uh, making evil people not evil. Ah, oh, a wand. Yeah, that would be good. I'd like to be invisible. Oh. Yeah. What do people get wrong about Los Angeles? Thinking of it as a place, a single place. I think it's, it's there's Many like places. hundreds of different Los Angeleses. Los Angeles. Los you, Angeles. Los, Ange Los Angeles. <laughs> if you weren't a musician, what would you be? Uh, I used to always say English teacher, but I've gotten really, really into design, like furniture design, really? decorative arts in the last five Try or ten it. years. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd love to be an interior designer, but I'm very disorganized, as we mentioned, so I don't know if I could handle that. That wouldn't work, would it? No, I need, <laughs> I need someone to handle we'll put all it over that. there, maybe over uh, there. <laughs> Tell me something you long believed to be true, but realized wasn't. Uh, that I do my best work at night. Not true, then. No, mm -hmm. I think it's just an excuse to stay up late. Give me something people don't know about you. I think I'm a lot less serious than people assume. People would think you're very, very, very serious based yeah. on the lyrics you write. Yeah. You're deep and serious. Yeah. I think I think when I work on music, I'm occupying a part of my brain that I don't spend much time in when I'm not working on music. Would you like rap and hip hop and Dolly Parton? Yeah. <laughs> Up next, it's a Larry King now and a Larry King first. Joanna is going to teach me how to play the harp. Don't miss this. Stay with us. Okay, Joanna, you may begin. All right. So I'm going to teach you how to play the harp. Okay. 
that you do things with your feet. Too. You do things with your feet, yeah. Like the piano. Uh, different. Uh, you change key with your feet, so it's like. Oh. Those are the pedals. So there, it's diatonic. So there's seven pedals that correspond with the seven whole notes. Let's do a little tune. All right. So, well, I think we're not going to graduate to tunes today. Okay. But you're going to play something called a glissando. A glissando. A glissando is the sound that. Um, many people just associate with the harp. Okay. It's kind of funny that I'm going to teach you this because I don't use glissandi in my music. Really. You don't use glissandi, no. but I will use You will glissandi. use glissandi. We will all use glissandi okay. when we go to heaven through the sound of the angels. Uh, okay, so. So angels do this. Angels do this. Okay. This is Angel Larry. Yeah. Now, Not in heaven yet. Uh, traditionally, you use... What do they use in hell? Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, so sit. Do I hold the harp here? First, sit straight back, feet flat on the ground in front of you, legs apart. Harp is going to go between them. It's going to rest on your right shoulder, but just gently. Oh. So you're going to kind of be okay. sitting forward enough in that your feels good. with your posture that you're not bearing too much weight on your shoulder. No. Okay. Your right hand will go like this with a, a light weight being borne by your right wrist. Your hand position will be rounded like this, a little more like that, turn <laughs> this way, turned like fingers pointed down. Okay. Okay. Do I use this hand? Yes, with a glissandi, you're gonna use the thumb of your left hand going down, and no. you're going to use your pointer finger coming up, and you do can I, alternate. Where do I go, over there do I start? Traditionally, your left hand covers the lower quadrant of the harp, or the lower sector of the harp, not quadrant, and your right hand covers the let, upper. Let me try some. Mm -hmm. Let me try another thing. Yeah. So right now. Was that a glissando? Not exactly. You want to you want to do just one hand at a time. Okay. At first, so first up with the right hand, and then down with the left hand. Okay. Yes, you did it. Hold on, I'll do it again. <laughs> now, I'll just show you maybe, so that's, that's like, that's sort of a, a small a, glissando. All right, a small glissando. A small so. glissando, so uh, maybe a more full glissando would be like. Whoa. Showing off. No. You're showing off. It's, uh, it's the easiest thing to do on the harp. Just kind of to make more volume, keep a good curve in your hand okay. rather than having it be flat. So think that of it. That was beautiful. It was beautiful. <laughs> think of it as a as a sort of note that's traveling Can up and then fast? traveling down. Yeah, do it fast. That was beautiful. It was. It was so good. Joanna? Yeah. Step away. <laughs> that was the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. I'm touched. <laughs> I love the harp. Me too. Thank you, me darling. Too. Thank you. I'm forever in your debt. <laughs> well, that was me attempting to play the harp. What an experience. Go to our Larry King Now blog for a special social media segment with Joanna. You had lots of questions, and she's answering them. Her latest album, Divers, is available on iTunes, Amazon, and on the Drag City website. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at Kingsthings, and we'll see you next time.